tell you, let's talk a little bit about Le Demoiselle d'Avignon. This is a painting by Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso created this work and is considered the first cubist painting. It's cubism. Let me turn the lights out so you can see it a little bit better. Need all phones up, guys. Need all laptops off. So you can see in this work, let me get a little pointer here. Look at this, everything's kind of angular, right? Everything is angular. Even the representation of the females. Look at this, look at this. Look at this angular nose on this character. Look at the other angles. It's kind of reminiscent of a certain type of mask that was produced in Africa. We'll take a look at some of that later. But along with Georges Brock, Pablo Picasso invented Cubism. And some of the things to note about Cubism is it turns the previous thinking about painting on its head. It is a complete opposite of what painting was thought to be before the, this came along. Let me turn the lights back on. So what is thrown out? Many things. What do we know about perspective? We had a perspective unit in this class. I think it was uh, last semester. But in linear perspective, what's going on? Everything's moving back into the background. But what do we see here? We see here no respect for the um, vanishing points that can be laid into um, an artwork to make it look realistic. Charlie, your head up. There's no respect for that. Demoiselles d'Avignon. They are not painted realistically. They are painted mainly with geometric shapes. What are some of the geometric shapes? Can y'all see this? What are some of the geometric shapes that are found there? Triangles, did you say? Exactly, triangles. Are there? They're squared off things. There. It looks like there's like two views of the same thing at the same time. There's a couple of instances of that. We see almond-shaped eyes. The eyes are elliptical, almond-shaped. We see the poses. They're very, I don't know, they're kind of provocative. What do you think these women, what is their occupation? What could it be? They are from the Damignon area of Paris, France, which um, Pablo Picasso was known to frequent. What do you think their occupation is? Prostitutes? Very well might be. They very well might be prostitutes. It is known that Pablo Picasso would frequent such businesses. So, Lady Demoiselle Damignon, he might be painting portraits of individuals that he's frequented in the Damignon area of Paris. We don't know. But um, in this work, many things make the thing uniquely cubist. Now, did Pablo Picasso know how to paint? Could he paint like something realistic? No. You all know? No. Actually, he, he could. He studied painting. He could do it. Let me find a couple of things for you. I'll show you a couple of examples. Of, yeah, he could paint. He could paint if he had to. He could paint realism if he had to. Shades of blue. Great to work. 
Example of Pablo Picasso's Blueberry. This is all Pablo. Look at this. Exquisitely rendered. Exquisitely rendered. Imagery. These individuals look like that. Okay, guys. You've got to pay attention. All right? Take names. You've got to pay attention to be quiet. So, what's different between this painting and Les Demoiselles d'Avignon? Somebody tell me. Well, now, are they not nude in the other image? But it's a different color. It's a different color. Yeah. More detail. More detail. So, this was earlier. This painting was done earlier in Pablo Picasso's career. So, more detail. It was more realistic. He knew how to paint. This is from Picasso's Blue Period. So, in the uh, Demoiselle d'Avignon, the image is, is more angular, geometric shapes, and a complete disrespect for perspective. We see here things in the foreground, and we see things in the background. What is that in the background? Is that a figure, or is that a drawing within a drawing? Drawing within a drawing. It's a drawing within a drawing. So, still, we can say, well, that's not really perspective. But actually, we see perspective here in this little table, and this is in the background. So there's a little bit of perspective of depth that goes on. So now let's switch back to Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. Compare contrast. So here's what we originally talked about. Here we have figures. It's almost like a complementary color scheme versus what we just took a look at. The figures are yellow. You need to quiet, guys. You need to quiet. You need to quiet. The figures are yellow. The figures are, they're just right, bunched up right at the front picture plane that we're looking at. Who's behind who? We can barely tell because of overlapping. But the shapes are, if we wanted to put them in order in a perspective, they're kind of confusing. So that's the big difference of what's going on here. Okay, guys, you need to get out your Picasso applications and make an image using Picasso's style or themes. You saw a couple of different things. You'll probably be able to make a nice cubism image with that Picasso app. So it'll take about 10 minutes to make that happen. Okay, guys, so you have created a Cubism, piece of artwork. You use geometric shapes. You use a broken mirror effect. Doesn't this look like a broken mirror, someone? Yeah. It looks like a broken, broken mirror that shows a bunch of different facets almost. So that is one of the aspects of cubism as Picasso and George Brock developed cubism. So, you'll see geometric shapes, distortion, unconventional perspective. What about the fruit up front? You guys see the fruit in the lower part of the image? What's up with that? You're looking almost like straight down on it, right? You're looking almost like a bird's eye view on this plate of fruit. So, multiple perspectives, multiple points of view can be seen in cubism art. That's one of the other things that is uh, so groundbreaking. And again, this caused a ruckus in the art world, in the salons, and the, uh, the people with big money that were purchasing this kind of art. They didn't know what to think about it. I mean, ladies pulled out their handkerchiefs and held them through their mouths, and they were agape and, and aghast at what was being presented on the canvas. So the following elements can be found in cubism artwork, the following elements. They're abstract. Would you agree this is abstract? Yes. Yeah. We got the broken mirror effect. Yeah. Broken mirror effect. We have rearranged geometric components. People really don't look like that, do they? No. No, really. We have simplified shapes. We have unusual composition. Some critics argue that um, maybe the themes 
are different in cubism? I'm not so sure, because um, you might look at, oh, I don't know, um, Edward Manet's work called The Bar at Folie Berger. This got people in that type of profession right in the front of it. Let me get the door. I'm not sure about the subject matter. But I do know that Pablo Picasso had certain influences in depicting this subject matter. What I'm going to show you is going to blow your mind. I don't know if y'all are ready for it. You're going to see the comparison of two things. One element of this painting will be in it, and another item that is of African and Iberian origin. Where is Iberia? What is Iberia? Iberia is the Iberian Peninsula. It's Spain. It's Spanish. Pablo Picasso is uh, actually from Spain. He did a lot of work in Paris, France, but he's from Spain. So uh, we're going to see that influence. Let me bring it up and you'll see what I mean. Lights out. Three, two, one. So pay attention to this area right here. Right here. And right here. Look at this slope on this nose. Look at the slope on this nose. So Picasso had influences. He had influences. Let me turn these back on. He was influenced by African and Iberian styles. As far as Africa, it was African masks. Let me bring this up. You'll see what I mean. I don't know if you're ready for this. Are you ready for this? So guys, this is an African mask that was extant, extant, it existed at a time when Picasso may have had access to it. Do you not agree that African masks were an influence on what Picasso and George Brock developed for Cuban? Do you see similarities? So it might be that African masks were a big influence. Do you see maybe the shape of the nose? That's similar, is it not? Do you see maybe if you think about yeah, the eyebrows, exactly. If you think about it, that mask shows the same person from a couple different viewpoints. You got the right side and the left side. Look at the eyes, look at the color of the eyes in both. And Picasso's isolated detail there. The left eye is lighter, the right eye is darker. In the mask, the left eye is lighter, the right eye is darker. So I think there can be no doubt that African masks influence the work of Pablo Picasso. There can be no doubt that this is a uh, like a groundbreaking development in the art world by Pablo Picasso. And um, don't forget, he co-created Cubism with George Brock as well. I'll show you how to spell his name so you can look it up. You'll see what I mean. But there's some things we got to remember. Things we got to remember about the work Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. A couple things we got to remember. I want to get that back up on screen for you. So, a couple things you got to remember. You have to remember these because we're going to have an assessment, a quiz, tomorrow, where you'll need to know these descriptors for Cubist artwork. You got to know it's abstract, broken mirror effect, rearranged components, 
geometric components. More than one angle of view. We can see both the top of the fruit. We can see the top of that table. There is no perspective. There is no especially linear perspective. Only thing we have giving us a cue that this existence space is overlapping. That's the only thing we have. Only context we can have for three-dimensionality. We've got to know simplified shapes, composition, and subject matter. Again, you can argue subject matter. Eh, I can think of instantly um, an example of another painting that is not cubist that has similar subject matter. So you've got to know these things. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to have one of you, and we will choose randomly to recite what those items are that make cubism cubic. They are, again, abstract, broken mirror effect, rearranged, geometric, more than one angle of view, simplified shapes, composition. Let's leave off subject matter. We'll just leave off subject matter. So, abstract, broken mirror, mirror effect. Abstract, broken mirror effect, rearranged, Geometric, more than one angle of view. Simplified shapes, composition. Seven things you gotta know. So for the purposes of this exercise, let's say five. You gotta know five of those seven things 10 minutes from now, okay? So take the next 10 minutes to study those things I just mentioned. And what we'll do is, I have the class roster right here and the method for choosing who will recite five of the seven will be random. What we'll do is we will reenact an artist in the studio dribbling paint, but instead of dribbling paint, we'll get a little bit of water, and we'll let a single drop, Kyle Sean, we'll let a single drop fall from the brush, and wherever it lands, whoever's name is next to that point will recite the five out of seven ingredients of a cubist image, okay? Okay, guys. We'll go to lunch here in a moment. When we get back, we will choose the one person that's going to recite five of those seven things, okay? When you get back from lunch, we'll make that happen. Everybody have a good lunch? Yes. Sean, I need you over here. Sean, there's your seat over here, guys. Okay, we're rolling. Sean Swinton. Sean Swinton. Guys, put your phones up. Put your laptops up. Yes. No. Put your laptops up. Put your phones up. It is now time to talk about the five of the seven elements of cubism. So y'all got that memorized? You know what they are? Five of the seven. Now the way that we're going to choose who will recite five of the seven is. Got your names on the roster as we explained before lunch. Got your names on the roster. We're going to simulate what might happen in Picasso's studio if he had a too much loaded onto his brush. A little bit of oil paint dropped down to the floor. We're going to do the same thing, only wherever that drop lands closest to a name, that person will recite five of the seven. Okay, so let's make it happen right now. So we'll get this, put this thing on the floor. I'm 
do it. We'll put the we'll put the roster on the floor. I got the paintbrush held lightly but firmly in my right hand. I do it. You want to drop it? No, see, they might think that you're uh, whoever ends up on. They might think you made it. No, no, no. So we need an impartial dropper, and that's going to be me. So I will now wet the brush. On the floor. That's you. Your head's up. Your head's up. Your head's up. Okay, here's the drop. I'm just trying to get it down here for the end. Here's the drop. And it looks as though, oh, Daniel Henley. Looks like he's squaring Daniel Henley's name. What do you think? Do you agree? Mickey Kurtz? You want this dead center right here? Right here. Do, I get, do I get a uh, agreement that this dead center? So, five to seven, what might they be? Hang on, hang on. So, we got shapes, right? We got geometric shapes. What about, take a look at this thing. What about perspective? Well, there, there, there actually is, is no real perspective there. So we got geometric shapes, right? Everybody agree? We got, what about that effect that happens when you uh, accidentally drop a mirror? It breaks. Broken mirror effect. That could be another one. What about distortion? You got distorted geometric figures. More than one angle of view. We have what? The fruit and the table. It looks yep. like you're looking right down on it. How many is that? Are you keeping count? Four. Four? Okay, we need one more. What's the one last one that might be? Might want to use that. What about what's it called when how you arrange something on the page? The arrangement, but what's it called? It starts with a C. Anybody back here know? No. It starts with a C. It has to do with how you arrange things on the page. Composition. Composition. All right, we built him out. Good job. Thank you so much, Daniel. Have a good job. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. So, guys, for the assessment tomorrow, it's going to be quick. Quick assessment tomorrow, I'm going to ask you the same question. you got to have five of those seven that we just talked about. you got to be able to list those.